Okay, fifth grade, grade lesson 82, and this is called Greatest Common Factor, GCF, okay? We're going to learn about that, and what this is going to help you with, Greatest Common Factor, is going to help you with is reducing fractions. Remember what we did last, last lesson? Mm -hmm. This is going to help with big numbers being able to reduce well, okay? So you'll learn what I mean in a minute, okay? So... Tell me again, so this is greatest common factor. Do I have to write this? You can if you want to. It's not that important. Just write GCF. Okay? okay greatest common factor. Which stands for greatest common factor. Now, do you remember what a factor is? Uh, the answer to a multiplication. Sort of. That's no, the it's part. a number it's in it. It's the numbers it's in like it. Very good. So it's blank times blank equals blank. This is the product. These are the factors. Yeah. Good job. So, what they're saying, if they want to know the factors of 12. Okay. They're asking you, what are the factors that equal 12? The two factors? Just tell me some factors. Six and six. That's plus. We're doing times. Oh. Yeah, but that was a good idea. Two and six. Two times six. So I'm going to write... One times twelve. Two and six. Okay, so wait a minute. I'm going to put the answers right here. So far... Two times six and one times twelve. Two times six. One times twelve. Anything um, else? I don't think so. One more. Oh, I know it is. It could be the one, four, mm -hmm. and three. Very good. Three times four. So watch what I'm going to do. Okay. When I write down my factors of 12, I'm going to write them in order from beginning to the end in numerical order. So mm -hmm. my first number would be a one. Done with that. What other factor is there? There's a two. You see what I'm doing? Uh -huh. I'm just writing down the numbers, the factors that equal 12. 1 and 2, this number does. 3, do you see what I'm doing? Uh -huh. 4, 6, and 12. Does that give me all of them? So, uh, yes, these are the factors of 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. So basically what I'm saying is 1 would go into 12, 12 times. 2 would go into 12 6 times. 3 would go into 12 4 times. 4 would go into 12 3 times. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. These are the factors that go into 12. Okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Got it? Okay. Now, that was the factors of 12. Now, they're wanting me to find the factors of 18. So stay with me. Factors of 18. So again, what I'm asking is, what times what equals 18? So tell me something. Um, Start with one. One times 18 Very equals good. 18. So I'm gonna put one times 18, okay? And then there's two, two times six. Nine. Close, nine. nine. Very good. Two times nine. Okay. Would three go into it? Three would. Mm hmm Three times six. Very good. Three times six. Four? Four times what? Let's see. Four times four is 16, and four times five is 20. So no. No. Will five work? Five. Five is always numbers that end in five or zero. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty. You see how it ends in five and zeros? Yeah. So this end in five or zero. So we know five doesn't work. Five times something. Six. We know that six works because six times three. Yeah. Seven. Seven times one is seven. Seven times two is fourteen. Seven times three oh. is twenty-one. We passed. Is there no more? Eight. Eight times one, eight. Eight times two, sixteen. Eight times three, twenty-four. Nope. Nine. We know that nine works. Nine times two. Nineteen something, isn't there? 
19. No, because that's over it. The one with like the like 7 times 7 equals something like. 7 times 7 equals And then that was like 4 to E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is just 18, 18. Okay? Okay. So. No more. No more. Okay, so these are my numbers. Let's go in and put them in order. One, two, three. What number's next? Uh, six, six. then nine, then 18. Nine, 18. Okay, so these are my factors of 18, right? Yeah. Now, we've learned about the factors, factors of 12, factors of 18. Now they want us to find the factors that are common. We'll do greatest in a minute. Okay. Think about the ones that are common. Now, common in math means same. So, like, 5 times 5. No, no. Whatever. Well, no, that's good. I know what you're saying. No, I'm saying the factors of 12 are this and the factors of 18 are this. Do they share same factors? Yes. So let's circle them. One, two, three. One, two is the same. Three Nine, is the same. Six is the same. Anything else? Nope. So we've circled all the common ones. Which one is the greatest? Eighteen. No, of the commons. Six. Six. So the greatest common factor of 12 and 18 equals six. Mm -hmm. So, watch how this works, Eli. You ready? All that you just did is unto something. So watch what happens. What if I have a fraction that is 12 divided by 18? It's good to know the factors of it and which one is the greatest because that's the one I'm going to use to reduce it. Got it? Oh. Now, I could use 2 to reduce it because they're even numbers, but I'll have to keep reducing it and yeah. then reduce it again and then reduce it again when I can just take one step and reduce it finally. Okay. Are you with me? Okay, so what is 12 divided by 6? 12 divided by 6. 2. 2. And what is 18 divided by 6? Nine. No. Uh oh. Six times. Six times. What equals eighteen? I don't know. Oh. Oh. Um. Three. Very good. My final answer would be two thirds. Right. And do you see why using the greatest common factor was easy to reduce this? Yes. Now watch what happens. Let's take the same number, 12 and 18, as a fraction. Stay with me. Okay, I'm going to leave this up to look at. 12 divided by 6 is... 12 eighteenths divided by 6 is going to be 2 thirds. Yeah. Okay, now watch this. 12 eighteenths. Remember how I told you there's a clue that if you both have two even numbers, it's easy just to reduce it by using 2. 2 will always reduce even numbers, right? Yes. So let's do that. Divided by 2. And I would get 12 divided by 2 is 6. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 18 yeah. divided by 2 would be 6. 18 okay. divided by 2. Yeah, I got, um, 9. 9. Okay. But then you ask yourself this, Eli. Will 6 ninths be reduced? Yes. What number can reduce it? Because we're trying to reduce it to the farthest we can. Six? Like, uh, like, what do you mean? Yeah, I'm asking what number will go into both six and nine to reduce it. Okay. Three. Three. So I'm going to divide this one by three. Six divided by three. Six divided by three is? Is two. Very good. 9 divided by 3, 9 divided by 3, is 9 divided by 3, oh, um, 3 times what equals 9? 
three, very good. So, I get the same answer, 12 eighteenths, broken down, reduced is two thirds, but this one only took one step. This one took two steps by reducing it. Uh, so if you choose a bigger number to reduce with, mm -hmm. it only takes one time. If you choose smaller numbers to reduce with, it takes several steps until you finally yeah. reduce it. Will anything go into two and three? Both? No. That means you know you're done. See how that worked? Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? So if you know the greatest common factor, which I knew was six, yeah, then it only took one to reduce it. One problem. So the final answer was? Is two thirds. Then what was this doing just now? Both of them equal two thirds. Oh, okay. But this one I divided by a big number, six. Yeah. This one I divided by smaller numbers, which mean I had to do more steps. Yeah. You understand? Kind so it helped me to find a big number, the greatest, the biggest common factor because it helped me to be able to just have to reduce one time. Yeah. Okay. And you don't have to fully get what I just said, but that's the reason why we do greatest common factor. Mm -hmm. So that you can reduce with a big number, the greatest number, the biggest number, so you can take less steps. Yeah. Okay. But if you want to take more steps, just choose a smaller number and keep reducing it until it's done. Yeah. Okay. But that's the whole purpose of greatest common factor. The biggest common factor. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now, well, then you have one more problem to do that I want to do with you. Okay? So, this time they tell me to, this one's a two-step problem. Find the greatest common factor of 8 and 20. Okay, write this on your paper. You're going to do it with me. The whole thing mm -hmm. you just did? Okay. No, no, you don't have to write fine that. Just write uh, 8 and 20 on your paper. Those are the two we're going to be finding the greatest common factor of. 8 and 20? 8 and 20. So I'm going to write number 8 here and number 20 here. Help me think of the factors. 8's factors are... Tell me. Uh, oh, um, Start one with times one. Eight. 1 times 8. 2 times 4. 2 times 4. Will three that's go into it? That's it. Four won't go. Yeah, very good. So let's put these in order. One, two, four, and eight. See how we did that? Yeah. Okay. Now let's find the factors of twenty. What would do we be able to start with? Let's start with one and move up. One times twenty. One times twenty. Two times. Two times. We're doing the factors of 20, right? Uh -huh. Okay, 2 times uh, 10. Very good. 3. Uh, 5. 5 will. 